Right, good evening YouTube. We're just taking the Magneto bench tester one stage further. I quickly knocked together a Magneto there from some bits we had in the scrap and a harness and some crude test gaps there. All right, I haven't built up my calibrated gaps yet because um, I found this uh, set of the proper things on eBay, three-point test gaps. So I'm going to wait for them because they, well, it's just the proper thing. They need a bit of restoration, but it'll be a better job. I was hoping to be able to get the RPM from the P-lead connection, but I get a lot of interference. Um, but what I have found is this is such a big motor under such little load that it runs uh, within three or four RPM of synchronous speed when it's driving this mag so I can get the RPMs from the frequency of the inverter drive and the scope will calculate it that way so let's run a little mag test consult the Oracle okay Rotate the test stand, drive poorly in the same direction of rotation as stated on the magneto data plate, which is uh, counterclockwise looking at the magneto drive, which we're all set up for. The impulse coupling should engage the stop pin in the magneto frame below approximately 200 RPM. If the impulse coupling pulls slip past the stop pin or engage intermittently, the impulse coupling is not operating properly, so we'll test that. Coming in speed, determine the lowest speed at which the magneto can be turned and still spark the 5mm gaps without missing. The test gap must fire constantly at 200 RPM for non-impulse coupled magnetos and 350 RPM on impulse coupled magnetos. So, we will go for 350, make sure it sparks all the gaps. Again, I don't know if it will, it's one that I built up from a scrap box of bits, but there's no reason why it won't work. And uh, we'll see what happens. Right, so I'm running 350 RPMs and <clears throat> it is firing all the gaps fairly consistently. They're not calibrated gaps, as I say, I haven't got my proper gaps set up yet. This is just a mock up, see if it all works. And um, so what we'll check now is that as we reduce the RPM below 200, we get a fairly constant impulse coupling engagement so let's turn it down um, I'm hearing the coupling start to clatter fairly early on occasionally but as I say the scrap mag it may be a faulty coupling but it is cut it is working nice and constantly now at about 170 rpm 150 rpm I think 5 Hertz is about 150 now we're getting a retarded spark but we're still getting a spark and we'll just look at a slow motion clip of how this coupling works i've slowed it right down here you can see paul catches stop pin and then that stops the mag rotating while the engine continues to turn and when the there when the trip dog releases the pull from the stop pin the wound up clock spring inside the coupling flicks the magneto very quickly through its sparking position. So you get a retarded spark, um, maybe 30 degrees retarded. So if the proper ignition time is 25 degrees before top dead center, you're getting a spark between top dead center and a few degrees after. Now that's great for hand swinging and starting these big direct drive engines, because it gives you a you know, no, no pro chance of a kickback and a strong spark. I'm gradually speeding up the drive, and you can see the coupling starting to miss now as the centrifugal force acts on a flyweight on the back end of that pull, which you can't see, and begins to pull it in. Um, and what I want to see is that when I get a back up to 350, um, that the stop pins are not really engaging at all. Now they're mainly slipping past now, we're hardly getting any catches. I'm gradually increasing the RPM and 
time I get back up to 350, they're touching, but they're not actually operating the coupling. There. And we're back up to 359, 360. Um, what I want to do now is just increase the RPM to around 500, which is the idle speed of the engine, and make sure that we're not getting any engagement at all of the coupling, because if these couplings clatter at idle speed, it's it's not really good for them. It will, you know, destroy the destroy the coupling. And as we said in a previous video, looking at the stop pins and the mag overhaul, you don't want to have bits flying around in your engine. Yeah, it's not good for it. So there we go, 5:30. We'll have another look in slow motion. Now, as I say, this is just a scrap coupling hauled out of the bin. It may not even be the right one for this mag, so no guarantee it's going to work. Um, let's have a little look. Let's look, get the slow motion shot again. Right, now I can see and I can hear, I'll bring the sound up in a minute, that that hole is still striking the pin. Uh, a little over 500 rpm so that's something that probably wants investigation I'll do a bit more research on that as I say not even sure if it's the right coupling for this mag I just dragged all these bits out of a scrap box they're not going on an aeroplane um, we'll, we'll investigate that I'll just bring the volume up so you can uh, hear the clattering Alright, that looked pretty good, so let's do the high speed test. 4300 series, which this is. Operate the magneto at 1000, 2000, and 3000 rpm for 5 minutes at each speed setting. Observe the spark regularity at the spark gaps. Magneto must produce a consistent spark at all speed settings. I'll do it briefly, I won't keep you awake for 15 minutes, but let's run it at 3 speeds and see what gives. Okay, 1000 rpm. And we do it. The phone shutter speed camera causes some irregularity, but that is a constant spark, I can assure you. Um, and you can see and hear that it's not missing. So uh, we'll increase the speed a little, see how it goes. So for tonight, I'm going to call that a success. I have got some spark gaps coming that I found on eBay, so we'll build them up uh, next week sometime. I'm going to mount this whole thing on a on a big sheet of ply on a rack here. With some space down here for odd uh, bits and pieces and well i think it should work i think it should work well thanks for watching good night